Testing. Testing. One, two. Testing. One, two. Testing. 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 One, two. Testing. Testing, testing, one, two, testing. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two, testing, one, two, testing, 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 one, two, testing, testing.
The Lord be with you. And good morning. Welcome uh, to uh, worship. It's great to have a full house. Uh, the congregation is full, and you can just feel the love and the care of all the grandparents and parents as we uh, share with you our Sunday School Christmas program. What a great annual event this is. And we've had to struggle through some illnesses, um, but I think... Uh, with a little Christmas uh, miracle, I think we'll be all right uh, this morning. So um, we're no different than the rest of the community, right? Uh, but good that you've uh, taken your time uh, to join us uh, for this great, great event. Um, just a couple other announcements uh, to make today. Just want to remind you of our uh, Christmas Eve uh, services here at Grace and at uh, Providence Valley. So on Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th, we'll be having services at 3 and 4.30 here at Grace Lutheran, and then our six o'clock uh, service will be at uh, Providence Valley. Of course, uh, Sunday morning, Christmas Day morning, we have uh, worship with Holy Communion here at uh, 10 o'clock, so you're certainly welcome to come back and join us for those uh, 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 worship celebrations. Um, this uh, coming Sunday, we have uh, uh, worship here at nine o'clock with our choir singing, and then we'll be going out to Providence at 1045 where the choir will sing there as well. So if you're able to make those uh, times, it's all part of the, uh, our preparations for the Christmas holiday. Um, you're invited downstairs for a meal after our program, so I hope that you can uh, make your way downstairs and join in our fellowship meal uh, after the program is over this morning. Bulletins in your hand are given in memory of Ardeth Westgard's birthday from her family, so uh, we uh, thank her family for that uh, a memorial. Also want to remind uh, you, if you wish to uh, a sponsor a poinsettia uh, for our Christmas services to adorn the chancel area, we're still selling those, uh, $25 uh, to honor a loved one or to uh, uh, remember a, a loved one. So uh, our confirmation youth will help you with that after the service is over, if you wish uh, to sponsor a poinsettia. So with those announcements, I um, want to wish, uh, as we celebrate Jesus' birthday, we want to wish uh, Emerson Orada a very happy birthday. It's her birthday uh, today. But I just realized she, she's not in the, she's getting ready for the program, so maybe we'll sing happy birthday when she comes out to her. Right? Uh, but I wish Emerson a happy birthday. Let's stand and welcome those who are around us. Let's turn to the camera and wave to those who are joining us by way of our worship broadcast. I'll invite you to be uh, seated as Alyssa Olson and Cameron Olson helps us uh, light our Advent wreath this morning. So girls, you can come out. I think they're in the sacristy. Maybe they, I better go knock on the door. <laughs> Make sure that. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ that guards our heart and minds, and the joy of the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In Romans, Paul tells us the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how, the, how to pray as we thought, but that very Spirit indicates with Sigh too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of spirit, because the spirit increases for the saints according to the will of God. We often miss the presence of God because we look for the wrong things, whether hoping for easy miracles or wearing ourselves out, working for transformation in a broken world. We may miss the signs of God is coming and has indeed already come. We might think or our encounter with God must come as a profound emotional experience, and we spend our energy seeking such an experience more than we seek God's own self. 
During these days of Advent, we prepare ourselves to receive the Savior and the disruption of the Savior's coming brings. We lay down our agendas and expectations and learn to open ourselves to what God brings rather than focusing on what we want or expect. God's coming into the world never fulfills human expectations. It fulfills God's expectations. Let us pray. Generous God, you provide all that we need. We thank you for that you do not give us what we want, but what you in your wisdom desire for us. Open us to the miracles surrounding us every moment and teach us to expect your coming through each day. Pour out upon us your overflowing mercy, justice, and, and peace. Teach us to trust your absence so thoroughly that we share all that we have received. For, from you, the healing, healing of the world and the, of your name in the name of the Holy One who was, who is God and it is to come. Amen. Listen, Cameron, we're a little nervous. They didn't know that there'd be so many people here. <laughs> I think you did a great job, though, girls. Uh, I said, well, how many people would you be comfortable? Yeah, go. I asked them, how many people would you be comfortable with? They said, oh, about five. <laughs> so you're a little more than five. Let's stand together. We'll sing our congregational hymn, Joy to the World, hymn number 267.
after this hymn. I was going to, they wanted to get all the kids in first. They wanted to get all the kids in first. because they wanted the kids to be in here when we welcome. We're really looking forward to the Christmas program. It's good that we have a hymn that kind of ushered you in so you got a chance to zoom in where your mom and dads are sitting and grandmas and grandpas. Did you find them? Let's all collectively wave to them right now then. If you got them, let's, let's all wave to them and just get that over with. There we go. All right. I'm, and I'm in the way. <laughs> okay. And guess what? Here's Emerson. Remember I told you about her earlier? It's her birthday today. <laughs> happy birthday, Emerson. Let's say one, two, three, happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. <laughs> we want to make some other uh, spe special recognitions. If you work, these kids are a blessing to us that God gives us. If you work with our uh, children and our youth programs or our Sunday school, if you teach uh, Sunday school, uh, we just want you to stand so we can thank you for the work uh, that you do uh, with our kids here. If you're on the Christian Ed Board, please stand. And what a blessing you are uh, to them. We want to uh, certainly thank uh, Mr. Brandon and Alyssa Hurley for helping, Mr. Chris Laney for helping us with this program, all of our Sunday school teachers. Um, so let's thank them.
And then I'm going to invite Tammy Cruz to come down here at this time because we want to offer a special recognition for her. Uh, for the last uh, seven years, uh, Tammy has uh, directed our Christmas program and our music program with our, our, our children and youth, and we're just so thankful for your enduring love uh, that you've given to them over those uh, seven years and all your work and your effort. So we just want to honor you and thank you uh, for all that you've done for our kids and for all of us here at Grace Lutheran. I think we have, uh, we have a presentation for you as well. So let's give Tammy a round of applause as well. years I have enjoyed working with the, the music program. To all of the volunteers that I that have helped throughout the years, the Christian Ed Board, Tammy Wager and Mr. Laney, to the parents that have helped their children or child with their parts for the Christmas program. I am also thankful that I was able to be a part of telling the story of the Christmas through the Sunday School program. And last but not least, to you the Sunday School children, both past and present, it was a joy to work with all of you. And I know they're gonna do a great job today. Thank you.
A few more star sprinkles and we'll be ready. Hey guys, how are you doing on the Christmas present? That's a tough one, Bob. What do you give someone who made it all? Jesus is always grateful for any gift. Even the smallest gifts make him happy. He's just so wonderful. I just want his birthday present to be perfect. Jesus will love whatever we have to write in. What are some of your ideas? Yeah, we can read us your list. They did bring those wonderful gifts, but they gave so much more. Oh, the wise men were, how do you say, superb. The story of the wise men is wonderful. It certainly is, Alyssa. The story might just be the thing that gets us thinking in the right direction for the perfect gift for our Lord. We would appreciate your help and would love to hear the story. Okay, well, as many of you know, there was a star 2,000 years ago. Little did we know that it would be the star that led people to Jesus, and it was ordered to shine on Jesus the, mo the moment Jesus was born. How wonderful. Yes, it was wonderful. The star shined as bright as it ever had. Jesus was born. Our Savior was born. Shepherds came to worship Jesus. But, of course, by 
the storm, but the story does not end at that. You are right back, Sid. There were more in the days after Jesus was born. Joseph moved his family onto a little house on the edge of town. Now they had a home in Bethlehem, but Joseph feared his family was not safe. and riches to investigate this new star. They met each other on the way and found out they were all following the same star. travelers. We met a few miles back. I am from the South Orientant. My, my name is G Gathonia. My homeland is Buxnort, Persia. Hey fellow wise brothers, I'm James Stoner. I'm a healer of body and soul. I come from the land of Motown, Chaldea. I heard it through the grapevine that the one that will be the king of the Jews has been born. I believe that star will lead us to the Christ child. I want to find him and worship him. Come on, let's hit the road together to find this new king. Elva Estonia has left the Orient.
of orange are bearing gifts we travel so far. Field and fountain, more and mountain, follow yonder star. What a great story. Wasn't it amazing that these wise men all knew that if they followed the star, they would find Jesus? God was really leading the wise men. He just used the star as a tool to help them along. The wise men had real courage. courage. Just imagine having to leave your homeland to follow a star. The wise men traveled through sandstorms and cold nights, but they did not give up. They know, knew that ha, ha, worshiping Jesus and having him in their lives was the most important thing that would ever happen to them. The wise men were so very sweet. Very wise. Very, very wise. <laughs> ah, Jerusalem, what a rockin' city. I'm so tired. I'm sure I'm getting a saddle sore. I'm glad we're finally in a city. I could use some grub. Soul food, brother. Soul food. Focus, oh wise ones. We are seeking the newborn king. Do you think we should ask for directions? Whoever heard of a wise man asking for directions? But maybe these townspeople have some information about the new king that will help us find our way. Mercy me, it wouldn't hurt to try. Hey, excuse me, brother. Yes? Hey, scribe dude, have you heard of a new king being born? We've been the following that star and it has led us here to Jerusalem. The only king around here is King Herod and he's definitely not a newborn. I'm sorry, I shall not tarry. I have important business to attend to. Come on, folks, some of you must have heard of the new king. They say he'll be the king of the Jews. We wise brothers want to give him gifts and worship him. Are you sure you haven't seen him? I haven't seen any king. I haven't either. Can't any of you help us? We are looking for a king.
Now when King Herod heard about the new king, he was troubled. That King Herod wasn't very nice. He had no twinkle in his eye. No sparkle in his crown, no glow in his eyes. He sent for the wise men to appear before him. He wanted to learn more about his new king. Excuse me, wise travelers from the east. I want to invite you to King Herod's palace. I have heard, I have spoken to him, and he is anxious to hear about the new king. Come with me. I guess you could take a few minutes out of our journey to meet with your King Herod dude. Shucks, yeah. Maybe he can whip us up some soul food. Hey, Herod, main dude. What a rockin' pad you have here. Nice to meet you, partner. Like the threads, bro. Welcome. What brings you wise men to my city? We've traveled from the east following that bright star. We're searching for the new king, the king of the Jews. We saw his star in the east and have come to get and to come and worship him. This is the first I've heard of this new king. I, w I too would like to worship him. Once you find him, you must return to Jerusalem and tell me about him, then I can meet him too. No problem, Herod. We can swing back, but I am afraid we must be on our way. Catch, Catch you later, later King. King. Yep, it's time to hit the trail. Let's head him up and move him out. I know we stopped to catch a few wings on the trail, but I didn't sleep very well. I've kept having this here strange dream. It's telling me not to go back to that King Herod. Bless my soul, I had the same dream. Me too, I guess. That means we'll take that northern detour around Jerusalem when we return home and can the return appearance in front of that King Herod. Hurry, you must gather water from the well for mother. Okay, we can have this done in no time. Look, strangers. They are the royalty kings. Magi? -o? Wise men. Hey, little ladies. Yes, your majesty. Yes, your highness. Thank you. Thank you very much, little ladies. We are wise men. We have traveled from the east following that bright star. We're searching for a king, the king of the Jews. Yes, little sister. We saw a star in the east and have come to get down and worship him. Me and Jesus, there's something very special about this baby. People are saying that he'll be the new king of the Jews. All I know is that he's an awesome little boy. His something when his mother Mary goes to the market, we get to sit with him. He's so cute. I would just love to rock him. His eyes are filled with love. Come with us, we'll take you to him. You will love him, and believe it or not, you will. He will love you too, he's amazing. Is my crown straight? I wanna look my best. Give me a minute to shine this gold. Let me slick back my hair and dust off this box of frankincense. Bros, where's my myrrh? Ah, oh, thank goodness, I thought I might have lost it at the last sandstorm. When we meet him, what should we do? I might just bow. I might sing to him. Just imagine, my friends, we are about to meet our king. Hello, sir. Oh, hello, ma'am. Why have we come? We have followed that star to the new King Jesus. We've come to bring him gifts and worship him. You are welcome here. We know that we have been entrusted with a blessed child. Thank you for traveling so far to visit us. I bring the child gold. I bring him frankincense. I bring him myrrh. But there is one more thing I want to give to the Christ child. I give you my heart, Jesus. And I give you my love. And I give you my worship. You see, they gave the white, the, the, you see, the wise men gave Jesus their hearts. 
They gave Jesus their love. They gave Jesus their worship. I see they gave Jesus their all. We will make everything we do be a light, like Jesus. That will be our gift to Jesus this Christmas. Simply marvelous. What a shining idea. Truly the best gift anyone can give to Jesus is themselves. that the best gift for Jesus would be me. This Christmas, will you be like a wise man? Will you give him your worship? Matthew two ten twice. In Matthew two eleven, the Bible says, "On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They then opened their treasures and presented him with the with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh." The wise men worshipped Jesus and gave him presents. We should also give him our earthly treasures, like the wise men. But Jesus, more than anything precious found on this earth, he wants your heart. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. He wants your love. In Luke, 10, in Luke 10, 27, the Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. 
He wants you. In Cathedrons 1558, the Bible says, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Become a wise person. Worship Jesus this Christmas. Invite him into your heart and life. Give him your all and make this the best Christmas ever. as we receive our offering uh, this morning, I want to make just a few announcements. You can go ahead and pass the, pass the plates. Just a few reminders. Again, you and your family are invited to join us downstairs for a fellowship meal. I hope that you'll be able to join us. Our fellowship committee has been hard at work preparing, so um, we've got a great meal in store for you. And what a great job you guys did. Uh, we have also have a uh, a special bag of treats for you downstairs too. So when you come down to eat, you'll be able to get that uh, treat bag. Didn't they do a great job? And then just a, a couple other reminders. Again, we're selling our poinsettias to adorn our chancel area for our Christmas uh, services. If you want to sponsor a, a loved one, uh, we'll have our confirmation kids help you with that. Also, uh, as you know, that this uh, time of, uh, we might say, post-COVID, or the time when all these viruses are running rampant, uh, a lot of our homebound people have uh, been isolated in their homes, and we wish to bring them a little bit of Christmas cheer. So we have on the table down there packets of Christmas cards, and uh, they're already uh, labeled, they're already addressed. So if you'd be willing to take a packet of Christmas cards, uh, there are people in our community that are homebound. Uh, I know that it would be a blessing for them uh, to receive a note of Christmas uh, cheer uh, by many of you. So they're all ready to go. You can grab those on the table in the landing um, right down as you leave as well to go down to have a meal with us. So let's thank our kids one more time. Thank you very much. You did a great job. 
Thank you, Mrs. Hurley. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Feeling okay? She's going to go home and go to bed, I think. Let's stand then together. Go tell it on the mountain. If you want to sing it R&B or if you want to sing it rock and roll or country western, feel free to sing it however you want. Go tell it on the mountain. We'll be going around uh, caroling in our community at 5 o'clock, so if you can come back and meet us here at the church at 5 to spread some Christmas cheer, that would be great. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.